Hello friends and colleagues, my name is Austin Reyna, and I teach elementary music grades pre-K through second grade at Dalian American International School in Dalian, China. If you're watching this video, there's probably a good chance that you uh, have been affected by the coronavirus and uh, you may be looking at the possibility or have already been told that you're going to be teaching uh, classes online, teaching your music classes online. What I'm going to be doing in this video is I am going to be showing you um, what I have been doing for my music classes for my students, um, kind of what our school does. We have been doing this since uh, I, I want to say early February, I, I believe. My goal is to give you an idea of what online learning for lower elementary music looks like for me looks and looks like for our school so that hopefully you can get some sort of idea of something that maybe you want to do um, or that you want to try out. Um, and I need to uh, stress that this is not the, I'm not saying this is the best way to do things. I'm not saying that this is the only way to do things. Um, it's just simply how I've done it and uh, what my school is currently doing. And it's what I feel works best for me right now. Um, if you have any questions about uh, what what I'm doing, or if you have any um, suggestions, even that would be that, be, that would be wonderful. Um, I'm going to be giving you an overview of what my students have to do, like what their workflow looks like online, um, from receiving their assignments and then completing them, submitting them, um, and what it looks like for them to conference with me. And I'm also going to be showing you what my workflow looks like. You know, the steps I take to um, get my lessons published to my students and um, some of the stuff that we do in our lessons. Um, if you have any questions, again, please let me know and I hope you enjoy this video. Thank you very much. First, I'm going to show you what everything looks like um, kind of from the perspective of a student and what the workflow is for um, students who are in music class. So our school uses a service called Microsoft Teams. Our school is a, is a big Microsoft school. And um, I'm not really gonna go into a whole lot about what Teams is, but it's, it's a pretty good collaboration tool. Um, it's um, students and staff are, are basically put into Teams. Um, and um, so the teams that I'm a part of, these are basically the classes I'm in and some other groups as well. So um, again, I teach pre-K through uh, second grade. So, um, so if I go into a second grade class team, you, uh, we have all of the, um, we have what we call, call channels here. And there's a general channel and uh, the homeroom teacher's channel, um, uh, a specific channel for one student um, for something else, and then math music, reading, social studies, writing, and some other ones down here. Um, so if I click on the music channel, this is for all of our music lessons. Um, and every time I post them, um, I post my music lessons on each day that we ha normally have music class. At the top of this right here um, are several tabs or links that you can put on there. Um, I don't really use these first two tabs, files and notes a whole lot. Um, and then um, the music lessons page is basically where I host all of my videos and my and my lessons. I link them to these posts here. Um, uh, um, we use something called SharePoint and Microsoft SharePoint is kind of like a file and website hosting service, uh, but it's only for uh, people within a, a, an organization. So you have to have a, um, for us, you have to have a school email. Students use um, an email address that's been uh, created for them, um, even as low as pre-K. Oftentimes, it's the parents using the school's email or their students' email to log into all this. So they find their videos here. It's going to open up the website, um, but it's also linked. I have it linked up here um, that students can access as well. This is what our, 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 our lessons basically look like, at least for second grade. Okay, um, I have videos that are put on here um, that I uploaded through uh, Microsoft SharePoint. It's like I said, a, a website hosting service and a file hosting service. Um, but depending on your internet connection, you know, just like this, uh, there may be um, some connectivity problems. But I have it loaded here. Um, so here's what here's what it all looks like. You can they can access the videos here. I kind of give them instructions here. Any extra source materials. Um, this is one we did for a, a project where they um, create simple rhythmic patterns that they clap along to a 
a, a, a track that they choose in a specific genre. Um, they're organized by dates. I have each lesson labeled lesson six and then uh, 6.1, 6.2. So basically once they watch the video, they have to prepare, they, they practice the song, they follow the instructions that are presented in the video. Uh, students in first and second grade, we use a service called Seesaw. And um, I'm gonna go to the Seesaw page here. Um, it's really, really, really great for student assignments and submissions. So basically they go to um, Seesaw to submit their activities. So this one right here, you can see music activity 7.2, rhythm pattern tracks. So they click here to add a response where they upload a video based on the instructions I gave them in the, in, um, in the lesson video that was on that page I just showed you. So you can see um, all who have submitted their assignments, um, they have to submit it as a uh, draft first and then you review it and, and approve it. Um, and it's a really, really great way for kids to post their lessons. And, uh, and I share this uh, with the homeroom teachers as well. It's not just for music. Their home, the homeroom teachers for uh, second grade A and second grade B also uses this. So they go here, they post their videos, they upload their videos, and, and they move on to um, the next video that is posted on, on this this website here. Um, they can download the video as well. I also created a, uh, where is it, um, a special special folder to where they can um, directly download the videos. Um, it's called a SharePoint folder or SharePoint library, I think. And then they can access the lessons here plus any extra materials. Pre-K and kindergarten, obviously their parents do a lot of this for them or they, at least the parents work along with them. Um, for like say so I have kindergarten loaded up here. Um, this is this is class dojo. We use class dojo a lot. This is a music class dojo, and uh, I create um, activities for them to complete uh, based on the lesson, and then they upload the response here. Um, these are the ones that I still need to approve. I, I can see some really cool stuff, and the students really honestly have a lot of fun with this. Um, and um, so like if I if I click on this one. So that's long-legged sailor right there. Um, her other classes on this video is kind of sideways, but it's a really, really cool video. Um, this is my student here. It's probably gonna be blurred out when I post this. So brother's singing a little loud, um, but you know, I'm not assessing him, I'm assessing her, and her sister is playing the melodica right there. And I didn't ask for that. I just said, upload a video of yourself singing Fanga Alafia. Um, and this was all just the extra stuff that they just volunteered to do. It's really a lot of fun to give them some extra opportunities to do some cool stuff. But it's, it works very similarly to how I do kindergarten. There's a lot of unimproved posts right here, which I need to go through that. And um, these are really, really, really cute ones. Like this girl right here, her um, she's singing, I think it's Frog in the... No, the song Pitter Patter from First Steps of Music. She's singing and her dad's on guitar. Yeah, so that's a great way for them, for kids to just kind of do stuff at home with their parents, with their siblings, and stuff like that. So um, that is from the perspective of a, from a student. Um, now I, I'll go into a little bit of the workflow that I do every day. So in the morning, what I do is um, I plan out the lessons. Usually I have the lessons planned out, like, you know, by Friday the week before on a good week. Um, but since this whole online stuff started happening, I've had to do it like day by day, basically. Um, and so I plan out the lessons. I, I kind of figure out um, what do I want my kids to do today. I try to, for second grade and first grade, I try to do one to two videos. Sometimes I'll do three for second grade for each day. Um, and for kindergarten, first grade, I mean, kindergarten, pre-K, um, pretty much the same um, to maybe depending on the activity. I, I spend the morning planning the videos, recording the videos. The, the way I introduced this, uh, this video that you're watching now is kind of how the, the, the setup I had was uh, kind of how I normally start my videos. So this is usually what a typical recording setup for me looks like. Um, I start off by using my, uh, you know, I use my iPhone XS as a camera. The video works really, really well. Um, 
Uh, my school has these really nice condenser microphones. Um, we have several of them. I usually use that to record my voice because um, even though the my iPhone takes great video, the audio is not great. Um, so I have this microphone that I feed into uh, my laptop here. Um, I, I use Logic Pro to record audio. I have an audio interface that records audio into my computer. And then later when I edit the video, um, I will put the um, this audio recording on, um, on top of the recording that came from my phone just to make it sound a little better. Um, you know, I usually, I have this really nice uh, tripod stand for my phone that goes up, it's extendable, um, and it gives uh, uh, me a good viewing angle. And um, like I said, this is just what I do, what I feel like works best for me. And I just kind of stand here in front of my, um, in front of my room. It's what the, uh, my kids are used to seeing. You know, this is usually where my kids are, so I feel like it helps them kind of feel like they're still a part of um, everything that we're doing. So yeah, this is my current audio setup. So that's my setup that you saw in the other video. And then what I do is I load everything into Adobe Premiere Pro. Now Premiere Pro is a very advanced program. Um, it took me a while to kind of figure it out because I, I already pay monthly for the Adobe Creative Cloud Suite. It's been really worth it for me though. So basically, yeah, I, I load all my stuff into here. I, I I use my phone to record the audio, not the audio, the video, and then I use a microphone, this microphone I'm using now actually, to record the audio because um, it sounds a little bit better, and then I load everything into Premiere Pro, um, and then um, this is one I gave it a student example of one of our activities, and um, I put the words up here. I'm usually singing the ukulele, uh, and then let me at the beginning of the video, I had this little intro. Hopefully, it'll play correctly. That's how my videos usually start. I made this little graphic um, using Adobe Illustrator and um, I animated it with Adobe After Effects and then I paid someone on, on the website fiverr.com to, to create a little cartoon image of me here. Um, I just tried to make my videos as um, visually appealing as I can for my for my little ones. So uh, so I, I, I spend a lot of time editing these videos. I have to do several a day, but um, once I get in the swing of things, I, I usually get them done fairly quickly. Uh, and then I upload them to Microsoft SharePoint. And um, one thing about Microsoft SharePoint is I mentioned that you can only do it within your organization, I, I believe. So I can't like share this with, web page with you. Um, it basically won't let you open it because you have to have an um, email address within my specific school. Uh, and so it won't work for you. But a lot of websites kind of work like this. I think Weebly.com works well like this as well. So if I, whenever I upload a new lesson, and um, this is just how I do it. I'm not, I'm not saying this is the best way to do it. But whenever I upload a new lesson, um, I edit this web page. And depending on our internet connection, it can be really quick and really easy. Or it can be um, very challenging and frustrating. Uh, for example, right now, it's choosing not to load. Um, well, maybe I just need to skip over this. For, oh, there we go. So um, it gives me some editing options. So if I wanted to um, create, what I do is I create a new section of the web page, and then um, I try to make the old section. I change the background color to a light blue, um, and then the new lesson section is a bright blue. Um, sometimes I'll I'll copy this over. Um, here and I'll say I say music lesson eight, Friday March, I don't know fifteenth or whatever, whatever day that, that happens to be, and then I will click add new and then oh and first what I do I'm sorry for the videos I so if I have a new video file let's say this is not one of their videos but let's say um, I have a new video file a video lesson that's ready to go I upload it here to this SharePoint folder and then within SharePoint whoops. Um, within SharePoint, I can um, see it here, add file, and then the videos pop up here. And that's how uh, the students or the parents view them. And I, like I said, I also give them a way to directly download the video as well. So this is the SharePoint. And then I go to Microsoft Teams. We do have a lot of different applications um, to use, but I think we've gotten the hang of it. I go to the music channel, and then I make a new post that looks like this. Good afternoon. Happy Friday. Here's your lesson for today. And... Um, 
and that's kind of what it looks like. Oh, and then the other important thing that I do is I do individual conferencing with, with kids, my students, uh, throughout the week. What I do is I do uh, first, first and second grade. I do 15 to 20 minute conferences with them once a week for, per group, and um, they can sign up for uh, these segments, and I do two to three students per, per, um, per conference. So this is an old sign up. Um, so I use Sign Up Genius, and so they can use this one. Uh, I selected specific times where they can meet. Sometimes it's just one student. Sometimes it's uh, two students um, sign up at a time. And basically, for our conf- for our conferences, we um, we might sing a welcome song, like our normal welcome song. I'll do some solfege echoes, like I'll do a solfege pattern with them. They do it back to me, or I might have them read some rhythms. Um, I have, let me pull this PowerPoint presentation up. I can share my screen, uh, and let me say that we meet through Microsoft Teams. So um, Teams has a really good meeting and chat function, so if I want to meet with this specific student here, I just call her, or I can share my screen with her. Um, And it does let you chat with your students um, through this method in case they need help with anything, or I I need to let them know about something. Um, What was I doing? And then, so let me load up one of my presentations. Um, so this is what I do, like I might have them read these patterns for me and I can share all this with my students. Um, I have words of some songs here um, and stuff like that. I may have them read some solfege melodies and things like that. And I'll go over the songs that we're doing in our lessons, the lesson videos, I'll go over those songs as well. And that's Monday through Friday in the afternoons for first and second grade kindergarten. I do on Mondays and Fridays um, from 11 a.m. to 12. Um, and then pre-K, my, like I said, my wife teaches pre-K um, in this school, so I basically meet with them whenever she's meeting with them if, I, if I'm not busy at that time. So that's basically what I do. Um, there's really a lot more I could say. Uh, I'm sure this has been a long video. Yeah, very long video. Oh, just a few other tools that I use. Um, I mainly use uh, Mac for all of my work, um, but obviously this stuff can be done on Windows too. OBS is a really, really great screen recording um, software that lets you record a screen. It lets you superimpose a, um, a video of yourself. So I'm using my phone that's connected to my computer um, right there, iOS camera. I really hope this doesn't interrupt the recording. Um, and then I'm using this microphone as an input source um, to make the video sound a little bit better. Um, so I use that a lot for whenever I'm recording my screens. I like to have my face in here because... I feel like it makes it a little bit more personal for my students um, just to see me in the video. Um, I use Logic Pro, and this is only available for Macs. Um, I use Logic Pro to record um, audio for my videos, but sometimes I'll create these instrumental tracks or something like that um, for a wide variety of purposes. But Logic Pro is great. Audacity, I mean, yeah, Audacity is a free software that you can get on Windows and Mac, um, and then. Um, GarageBand works really well with Macs as well, um, so you can you can do a lot with GarageBand. And um, yeah, I used Adobe Premiere Pro for editing videos, PowerPoint for putting together lessons. I do my lesson planning in, in Microsoft OneNote, so I will do that. Um, and I think those are the big components of what I do for online stuff. Again, I feel like I need to say this is not. I would say the best method. It's not the only method. I'm not claiming that this is the best way to do it. This is just how I do it. It's not perfect. It took me a while really to get to this point. Um, But this is a system that I feel like my students work really well with. Um, They got into the swing of things. Um, You know, I teach lower elementary and um, pre-K first or pre-K kindergarten and I would say most first graders, they need their parents to be with their parents to be with them, to help them figure things out, to work their computer. But I would say a lot of my second graders um, are pretty independent, and um, at least from my standpoint, um, especially when they do their video submissions, when they record their videos, you can tell a lot of them are just kind of, they know how to do it. They know how to navigate Seesaw. They know how to navigate Microsoft Teams. And so a lot of them have the hang of that. And so if you teach the older grades, they may be able to do it. As, they may be able to handle it on their own as well. So um, that is it. Um, If you have any questions, please let me know. Um, I'd be glad to answer them. Like I said, I wanted to do this video because I know a lot of you will be 
trying to figure out this online learning stuff as well. Um, it was pretty stressful for me at first, and um, but it, it, it has been a great way to see students from another point of view. You get to see them at home. You get to um, see a little bit of what their home life is like. And like I said, you get some great videos of kids singing with their parents, with their younger siblings. Um, I've had a few lessons where I had them teach another sibling how to do a song or how to do a solfege, something like that, um, or a rhythm pattern. Um, so there are great a lot of great benefits to it. Um, you just kind of have to figure out what works best for your students. My students are, are really, truly amazing. Um, they're just awesome. So, And we have really supportive parents as well. So I feel like this method works for us. It may not work well for other schools, just depending on what your student population is like. Um, so it, this probably will look a lot different for you. So yeah, if you have any questions, just let me know. I'd be happy to... Um, answer them, um, but hopefully this answers a lot of your questions. Um, I'm sorry I, I'm rambling a lot in this video, but I, hopefully you got something out of it and some sort of idea. Uh, okay, thank you very much for watching, and uh, all the best, and I hope that you can find something good out of this. Thank you.